Welcome to the spring 2019 season of Arkansas Wildlife. For our debut show this season, we're headed to the Ozarks, and we're gonna kick things off with a smallmouth float trip on Crooked Creek. From Crooked Creek, we're gonna head east a little bit over to the Bull Shoals Tailwater and fish for some White River brown trout with a fly rod. Yeah, woo! Nice fish. And our final stop on this week's episode is the North Fork River, where we're gonna see how some volunteers from the White River chapter of Trout Unlimited are trying to establish a new wild trout fishery on the North Fork. All that in this week's winner of a hunting and fishing license right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. here on Crooked Creek, just put in at the Mark Oliver Georges Creek access, and we've got about six more miles to go down to the Fred Berry Conservation Education Center, and hopefully we're gonna tangle with quite a few small mountains between here and there. I hope I don't catch one on this, because it's my first cast. It's bad luck to catch a fish on your first cast. Psych. streams that carve through Arkansas's Ozark Plateau are known for harboring big numbers of smallmouth bass. Look at that, beautiful fish. Look at the yellow on his fins. So light compared to the rest of him. And that attracts anglers from across the globe. One of the area's most famous smallmouth streams is Crooked Creek, which starts near Harrison and empties into the White River near Rim Shoals. It's hard to beat the experience of fishing and floating Crooked Creek on an early summer day. With cool, clear water and beautiful scenery, the creek provides a scenic backdrop to some of the natural state's best smallmouth fishing. It didn't take long for us to land a couple from the canoe. Not the biggest fish, but like typical Ozark smallies, full of fight. Crooked Creek provides great smallmouth habitat, including abundant food sources such as crawfish, which comprise a big portion of the diet of smallmouth and many other species. The stream's cast of characters also includes largemouth bass, Ozark bass, green sunfish, bluegill, and catfish, but the smallmouth bass is the undeniable star of this show. Beyond the confines of the canoe, wade fishing provides a respite from summertime heat. We targeted deeper holes, which provide cooler water for smallmouth during hot weather, and the flowing water below riffles, where smallmouth bass and other species take a break from the current and lie in wait for a meal to wash downstream.
Because the vast majority of Crooked Creek's 80-mile length is bordered by private property, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission has been working in recent years to secure more public access to this amazing fishery. The Crooked Creek Water Trail stretches 22 miles from Pyatt to Yellville, with additional public access at Snow and the new Mark Oliver Access at George's Creek. At the Kelly Slab Access, you can enjoy the Game and Fish Commission's Fred Berry Conservation Education Center, which covers 421 acres along a two and three quarter mile bend on the creek. The center includes interpretive trails, outdoor and indoor learning areas, as well as additional creek access. Arkansas enjoys a wealth of smallmouth bass streams in the Ozarks and Washita's, but when it comes to quality fish and sublime scenery, it's hard to beat Crooked Creek. We made it here to the Fred Berry Conservation Education Center on Crooked Creek. It's been a great day on the creek, caught a few smallmouth, but the great thing about this part of the state is you're just a few minutes away from some great trout fishing. Don't go anywhere, we're gonna be doing that right after this break. As promised, we've traveled just down the road, not far from Flippin', and we're now on the White River getting ready to go out with Andrew Priester and try to catch some big brown trout today. like a small mouth. They go straight down for the most part. Every now and then you'll get one that'll come up jumping. Yeah. But most of the time they'll they're straight to the bottom. Get it, hit it, hit it! Oh get it. yes, get it, get it, get it. Strip, 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 strip. That's a good one. Oh yeah, we got a brown trout. Uh -oh. Yeah. Woo! Alright. <laughs> Nice fish. Beautiful brown trout right there. Probably a good 18, 20 inch fish. You can put him on the tape and figure it out real quick. All right. Man, Andrew, that's a ticket right there. That is, that's a good one. White River system in North Arkansas is home to four species of trout. Brook, cutthroat, rainbow, and brown trout all thrive in the year-round cool water provided by releases from the dams on the system's big upland lakes. While rainbow trout are the most common and are stocked by the thousands by the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, brown trout grow the biggest of Arkansas's salmonid species. In fact, Arkansas has produced more than one world record brown trout. The most recent was a 40 pound, four ounce monster caught by Howard Rip Collins on the Little Red River in 1992. Although the Rip Collins fish has been topped twice over the past decade, it still stands as a four pound test line class world record and is the third largest brown trout in the International Game Fish Association record book. It's not uncommon for anglers to land five to 10 pound browns and occasionally even bigger fish. Posing for a picture with a trophy brown makes the bucket list for many anglers. You get it right on the bank? Right there? up on the bank. And then we pop down below this point right here and just let it run out in that current. We're joining the quest for a trophy brown trout on a sweltering summer day on the Bull Shoals tailwater. We've been sworn to secrecy on the exact fly we're using, but you'll see we're targeting the banks during a period of higher water flows with a subsurface pattern under a strike indicator. We're nipping today. We've got a little bit higher water. Um, water's not been just real consistent in flows. Nymphing's really about the only way to go. Yeah. And uh, those, those, those browns are kind of keyed in on it. 
in the spring and summertime, we're here in June, April, May, um, all the, the nymphs and the insects will start hatching. The reason we're kind of fishing up more closer to the bank and sit out in the middle of the river is uh, a lot of those bugs hatch out of trees and under rocks in a little bit softer current. They can't hatch as well in the swifter current. It, it, it'll blow the eggs away and it'll, once those bugs try to come up from the rocks, they'll get up and they'll just get washed down the river and won't be able to hatch. That's kind of why we're fishing in a little bit softer water. We're here along this tree bank and there's a lot of midges starting to hatch out of the trees and stuff right now. So it's kind of just at that time of year, you know, different times of year come for, with different things. Look at that. Look how bright those dots are on him. Another good brown trout. There you go. Arkansas's North Fork River is short on length, but long on trophy trout potential. And with a little help from dedicated volunteers, the North Fork is becoming an even better fishery. 50,000 model cutthroat eggs just chilling here in this cooler. Although it runs less than five miles from North Fork Dam to its confluence with the White River, this tailwater trout stream has a far-reaching reputation for producing bruisers. The river has yielded several state and world records through the years, and if current efforts succeed, a unique strain of cutthroat trout could one day join the list. We're planting Whitlock vibrant boxes in the river, and the reason we're doing this, we're, we're wanting to put another quality uh, species of fish in the river. The brown trout in this river are reproducing naturally, and there's wild browns in the river, and they get big. The rainbows are not reproducing naturally in the river, they're more of a you know, more of a put and take fishery. The hatchery stocks them. And what we're wanting to do with this abominable trout, cutthroat trout, is uh, the end game is to have a naturally reproducing population. The White River chapter of Trout Unlimited is leading the effort to establish Bonneville strain cutthroat trout in both the North Fork and White Rivers. But volunteers from several Arkansas fishing clubs and even from outside the state have come to lend a hand. Bonneville strain cutthroats were chosen for a number of reasons. First and foremost, they look much different from the strain of cutthroat that has been stocked from the nearby Norfolk National Fish Hatchery. The first thing we want to do is we want it to be a, what we call a marker fish. The hatchery here stocks snake or fine spots, so we didn't want to do that. Obviously, we wanted something that looks 
very different so the average person fishing can can tell the difference between the two and that we can tell if it's successful. You know, that's the only way to truly know that if it's successful is if there's no other fish of that type in the river. The Bonneville strain cuts also share traits with the wild brown trout that have prospered in Arkansas's White River system. Bonneville cutthroat has, has very similar habits to brown trout. It's more, way more similar to a brown trout than a lot of the other cutthroats. They get really big. They turn predatory at a, at a smaller size. We kind of figured if the brown trout do well in there, then th these, these fish should, should as well. Motivated by a desire to leave the river better than they found it, volunteers converged on a North Fork River side channel last summer to seed the stream with thousands of cutthroat trout eggs. Put gravel all around it. The work took place under the watchful eye of fly fishing legend Dave Whitlock. Well known as an angler, author, and artist, Whitlock is also responsible for improving the design of the original Vibert box. The cutthroat eggs came from the Wyoming Department of Game and Fish. Volunteers used the Norfolk National Fish Hatchery to load the fertilized eggs into the top chamber of the box. By stacking the boxes in a cooler between layers of cheesecloth with ice on top, they stay cool and damp until they're ready to go into the river. When we left the hatchery, I took them home and put them in my living room so they'd be in the air, the cooler would be in the air conditioning. So they had 50,000 bottle cutthroat eggs watching Netflix with me last night. It really was neat though to sit there and man, I've got, you know, one of these days, I'm gonna go out here and catch one of these guys. It's kind of a pretty neat feeling. The Whitlock Vibrant Box works by protecting the eggs in the top chamber until they hatch. The fry drop into the box's bottom chamber until they lose their egg sac and can swim free of the nursery chamber. As simple as that sounds, there's still a lot of manual labor involved. Division of labor is key to the operation. One team of volunteers uses garden rakes and hoes to wallow out holes in the riverbed, creating artificial spawning beds while a land-based crew assembles wire cages to hold the egg boxes. You know, need some zips on the, side. the cutthroat eggs also need to be tempered to maximize chances of survival. They need to be within about five degrees, preferably three degrees of the temperature of the river. Right now with the ice, they're gonna be 30 something degrees and the river's, uh, let's see here, 53 degrees. Once the eggs have reached the right temperature, volunteers place the plastic nursery boxes inside wire cages surround them with river gravel, and then place them into the man-made reds. After a bucket brigade completes the shuttle of river gravel from a boat to the work site, more volunteers fill the spawning beds and smooth out the reds, a task that seems much easier to complete with garden tools than with a trout's tail fin. It will take some time for these volunteers to experience the joy of hooking one of these cutthroats. But five years removed from the first egg planting like this, big Bonneville cutthroats are already populating the river, thrilling anglers, and hopefully establishing another wild trout fishery on Arkansas tailwaters. We have had a lot of you know 18 to 22 inch Bonnevilles caught over the last you know year and a half or so. So they're in there are bottles in here big enough to spawn now. For the volunteers here today, fishing this river may never be the same. And I'll tell you, everybody out here that's helping, you know, when they catch their first Bonneville or catch a big one or whatever, it's just, it, it's just amazing the, the feeling that you get, you know, that knowing that you were part of the process and whatnot. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license. At the end of this season, we'll be giving away $500 worth of fishing gear with everything you need for outdoor adventures on Arkansas lakes and streams. It's all provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at arkansaswildlife.com and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Dolly Fields from Solgahatchia. Congratulations and thanks for watching.